What is a PLC? This is another quick presentation from PLC eUniversity. It's part of the Factory Rat series and this is the second in the series. If you want more detailed in-depth discussion of the subjects in this Factory Rat series, search on PLC eUniversity or PLC Professor. Go to the website, go to Virtual Classrooms, and then go down through there and pick your subject by classroom and have at it. What is a PLC? The first presentation, we were looking at this, and that was we had a controller made up of logic with logic in the memory. Then we had an input electrical interface, output electrical interface. We were interfacing three photo eyes into the input, and we, for an output, were turning on and off a electronic switch, the switching power to the motor. And that's where we left it. So now let's throw some hardware at this. Well, the centerpiece of all PLCs is the processor, and the processor is is not a controller. The controller has to have I.O. terminals on it, electrical interfaces for inputs and outputs, and a processor to be a controller. So we need a processor, and the processor has memory, it has a chipset. This one has two communication ports on the front. The top one, you recognize that, that's Ethernet, TCP, IP. The one right below it is RS-232 DF1, and you have a key switch, run remote program. You have six LEDs, it tells you whether or not it's running, force is enabled, fault is red if there's a fault, ENET will flicker if ENET, the Ethernet is active, you have a battery OK light, and you have an RS-232 active light. That's our processor. To that, we have to have an input module or card through terminals that the photo eyes connect to. We'll do sensor and output device wiring in a later factory rat presentation. We also need an output module with screw terminal. So there we have the three items. All three Three of these need something that you don't see there. They need a power supply. If you look at this power supply, you'll see that you have 120 or 240 volts in. The power supply gives you 24 volts DC on that set of terminals, but that's not for the PLC. You could use that for field wiring for some of your devices. What you don't see is on the back of that power supply, there's a connector that will connect into a chassis. Look at this picture of this chassis on the far left side. On the outside, you will see some connect. Power supply slides in there and then you have slot zero, the first one. Notice that it has two connectors on the back plane. The processor that can only go in slot zero. That second connector that the other slots don't have, that's the control bus that actually activates the I.O. module. So when you look at a hardware chassis and you see that one slot has more connectors than the other, that's your first clue. It's an active backplane. Throw all that together, we have a PLC in its entirety. Power supply, processor, and some I.O. modules. I picked this older PLC. This is a Slick 500 because there's millions of them around out there. However, let's go back a little bit further to the PLC-5. This is not the first PLC, but this goes way back. These things are boat anchors. Takes two grown men and a boy to carry one. Processor, again, is in the first slot. Then you have I.O. modules, and the unique thing about these processors was everything had to be on the front of the processor. All those connectors were for communications and other functions. It's a chassis for PLC-5, and you notice that that first slot has an extra connector. Again, that's for the control bus to activate those I.O. modules. And those I.O. modules that slid in there, that other thing laying there is a swing arm, and it pivots on a bottom rail. And if you look in the picture here, right at the top of the terminal strip, you see a little tab. You push down, you can release that, and it pivots down so you can remove the cart. Now what's unique about this chassis is that there's no processor. Instead, over on the far left, you have a remote I.O. adapt, and you have two blue cables coming in. Those are network cables. That means that all of this I.O. reached the processor in another chassis by way of a net. Also, if you're looking for a power supply, that's all the way over on the right, and that's a single slot power supply, and that supplies power to the back plane not only for the remote I.O. adapter, but all the I.O. module. Mount the PLC in a panel, connect it up to the terminal strips, and this is what it looks like. This is a family of controllers. All of these are controllers because they all have a processor and 
fixed I.O. All the MicroLogics are controllers. None of them are processors. They all have fixed I.O. You see several of these have I.O. modules that you can add on right in the middle that you see a I.O. module sitting right next to it and a ribbon cable connecting it. That is the back plane. They don't actually plug into slots. They just have ribbon cables that jumper from one module to the next. On the upper right, they have connectors that slide from one module to the left and to the previous. And there's a little tab that you roll over and it pushes a connector into processor and the last thing you have to have is an end cap back plane termination this is a more current family microcontrollers. This is the Micro 810. You slide in a special little adapter that costs $40, and that's a USB connection. The Micro 820, and it has an Ethernet port. And up at the top of the processor, you see six terminals. That's a hardwired RS-232. Two covers there that you can add snap-in modules. This is the 850. At the top, an Ethernet. And that's Ethernet IP. The RS-232 round DIN connector and you have a USB right below that, the mode switch. A quick mention of control logics, what they call a PAC, a programmable automation controller. This platform is anything you want, anywhere you want, for any reason you want. A quick mention of some other types of remote I.O. This is Flex I.O. With any kind of remote I.O., you will always see some sort of adapter on the left end, whether it's control net, ethernet, data highway, whatever it is. Now, I can see both of these are ethernet, and I see dual ports. This is point I.O. We also show an ethernet. We're going to leave it right there for now.